Hey everybody, we just shot a really fun class over on our Facebook Live show on how to make DAPT mandala disc bracelets. Or non-DAPT, where here it is attached to a dime on one side and a sterling silver disc on the other. Super cool. This one's sterling on one side, gold filled on the other. We show how to DAPT, we show how to mandala stamp, and we show tricks for getting the holes in just the right spot. So hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment. Subscribe, hit a little like there, or send us an email with a question, and we will get back to you. So this is my mom's bracelet. Isn't it pretty? I love it. Dimes on the back that have a very special meaning to her. Um, and I've used a swivel clasp from my personal collection. I don't know where I got this, but actually we were looking before this. I think they have them at Fusion Beads. Shout out to Fusion Beads. Go check them out, but not now. Stay, watch the video. Um, but she wears this every day. She never takes it off. Ever, ever, ever. And it's she just loves it. I think I it's the best thing I ever made her. <laughs> the weight is it feels really nice. The weight too. is awesome. It's super cool. So And they're just attached together just by the jump rings, is that right? That's right. Yeah. I first attached them with gold jump rings because she loves mixed metal. Oh, that's a good idea but too. But I couldn't get them strong enough. And I didn't have 14 gauge. So I tried 16 gauge oh. and they kind of pulled. So this is 14 gauge. Sterling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could see she said one was kind of snagging. I think it's this one. I have to every now and then oh, yeah, yeah. Just close a them up a little for her. You could also use stainless, which would stay even better. But I took a 16 millimeter little disc like this guy, Sterling, and just mandala stamped it. Punched two holes, marked the dime to punch equal holes on the back, and the jump ring just goes through both of them. But because it's a nice tight fit, they are sitting totally centered as if they were soldered. Do you God, see that? I love that. Yeah. Now, can I ask you, what is is a dime? Like, is it sterling? Like, with something on the inside? Like, what, what metal is a dime? I don't know. Okay. Base but metal. I think it might be copper in the middle. I really But your don't. mom doesn't have any weird effects with a dime. No, no. Oh, cool. And as long you can do things like this to our money in the United States, as long as you then don't intend to use it for currency... Not in other countries, so. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, there. Everybody has their own rules. You can see this guy. I punched my hole wrong, so I had to do it again. And I didn't pay any attention to front, back, or whatever on on the dimes. I just tried to, you know, do it. But the cool thing about dimes is the texture on the edge. Mm -hmm. So it gives it like this rim of. Oh, it's just so cool. I love it. So I decided. Well, let's do it and show everybody. And what would it look like dapped? So this is, it's really bright from the lights, but mm -hmm. I'll tilt it so that it's not too bright. This is the same thing, but with a gold fill 19 millimeter disc behind the silver 16 millimeter disc. And I dapped them to give them some shape so that they sit like kind of interestingly on your wrists. Let's and then these are not oxidized purposely. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I was just kind of playing with design. I could oxidize it like this. I could, I'd probably take them apart to oxidize them so I can really polish around the hole because otherwise oh, it, yeah. you have like a black rim around the hole. That makes sense. But um, it sits kind of neat on your hand. It's not super pretty on the back, but it's not horrible. I think it's kind of cool. So if I was making one for myself, I would use the sterling 16 mil circle and probably back it with like a, something thick because that's what's great about my mom's bracelet is the weight maybe like 18 gauge copper oh yeah it'd be really neat um you could if you left it flat like here's a gold one so let's pretend if you left it flat you could stamp and stamp something on here so it's reversible however i would only do it in the middle because if you do it on the edge it's going to show through on this side oh yeah that you makes know what sense. i'm saying yes yes but i do like that you could have something totally different on the other side yeah or, I mean, if you did it in a way that you did something and then it looked just textured on the edge, like here, then that'd be cool too. Oh, yeah. Let's pretend like we are continuing on with this bracelet and let's add these two guys to this end right here. Let's and I'm going to show you, well, I've already mandala stamped. You guys know how to mandala stamp. I don't have to show you that. There's a million videos on our site, but on this one, 
just trying to get the lighting so you can see it. There's, um, I use the sugar skull and then the half radiant heart or something. I don't know what that that's called. That's really pretty. Cool. Sharon had wondered, can you solder the dimes to the silver or solder the silver disc to the dime? I don't know. Okay. I don't know anything about the metal of dimes. Um, I, if I was making this one for myself, I would solder the sterling to the gold fill. I think it's, um, kind of a cool look, but at the same time, if you have your holes right, like it sits like really sturdy. Yeah, it does. I, I, it doesn't look like you need to. Yeah. I wouldn't try to solder anything to money because it's just, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's my disclaimer. Um, all right. So we've already mandala stamped. So now I'm going to texture the outside of the gold fill blank and I'm going to use the peened edge of my chasing hammer. I hold it with my hand and just go around the outside. Now usually I try to stay right on the edge and I kind of come at an angle like this. That's good. I can hardly see with the camera in my face. But since this is going to be on the outside of the sterling, I don't really care if I hit the middle accidentally like that. Oh yeah, that's you true. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of going for it. Now, when you do that on the edge, are you marring your um, block at all or not? No, because I'm not hitting my block. Oh, okay. And even if I did, I'm going this light. Okay. You don't want to be, you know, smacking on your block, but if you accidentally slip. So you can see if I had this on there. That's pretty. It's pretty cool. That's beautiful. Let me get a little, I don't know, maybe I'll turn this light away. No, that doesn't help. It's just real bright. Okay. So I'll hold it up. Oh, and Deb had said what size are the blanks? She had missed that. The sterling is, uh, this is 22 gauge. You could use any gauge actually. And it's a 16 millimeter and this is 19 millimeter. They're 22 gauge, 24. You could use 24 gauge because it's getting backed. So it'll be sturdy mm -hmm. and it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted a really strong, good stamping impression, you could go a little thicker and go for 20 gauge. But as the gauges get thicker, they get more expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know someone's going to ask, when do you do the holes? I dap and then punch the hole because if I punch a hole first and dap, it's going to stretch the hole mm -hmm. into a oval. Mm -hmm. So here's my block. Again, this is different than the one that we sell, but they all work exactly the same. I've just had this since honestly, probably 1991. I'm going to use this biggest bowl here and I'm going to use the biggest dap that I have and I'll do the gold first. Now that you want it to face down if you want it to dome this this way, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to hit it with a thrashed hammer like this, not my chasing hammer. I mean, I could, but you could mar up your chasing hammer and if you don't want to, then don't do that. Don't do it. You're hitting a, a steel tool, so mm -hmm. I would just use a nail pounding hammer. This just happens to be what I have close by. So I'm going to lay the dap on it and I'm going to hit on the top and then I'm going to go around a little bit. Now here's the deal. If you hit it too hard, you start to lose some of the texture or some of the stamping. And can't you also make a dent in it if you hit it too hard too? Depending on the bowl, like if you go on a really shallow one and you just go for it, yes. But that's why I'm using a big one. Mm -hmm. You could also use a wooden dap dapping block. It just doesn't have um, much of an effect. Mm -hmm. I just want to check and make sure or something. Yeah. So I'm just going to lay that on there. And it'll kind of slide around. Just try to get it back centered again. Okay. There we go. Wow. You really did make that look very easy. It is easy. Is it, is it better to start with a bigger dish? Like if you're unsure? Yeah, I think it's, however you're dapping it, even if, you, if you're trying to dap it to a full half circle, mm -hmm. I work through the bowls because if you go straight to like the most drastic one like this, you could dent it up or okay. end up with like a weird shape in the middle. I do remember denting it and you could even get it stuck in the bowl too if it's too yes. small, right? Yes. Yeah. So on this guy, I'm, I'm going to try to get it shaped without hitting it too hard because I don't want to take out the impressions. Mm -hmm. Remind me to talk about annealing and when and why you might want to do that. There we go. Oh, that looks good. So see how they lay really nicely on top of each other? Mm-hmm. 
nice and flat. Cool. Love it. I could do it a little bit more, but for time's sake, let's just move on. Well, let's keep this here. It's a good backdrop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like the holes are the tricky part. So for the holes, I start first on the silver one. And because this 19 millimeter blank is kind of big, and you need the hole to capture both, you want to get as close to the edge of the silver one as possible, otherwise you're going to need gigantic jump rings, mm -hmm. right, to mm -hmm. connect them. So you can see here, I think this is like a 7 mil jump ring maybe, mm -hmm. and you see how the edges of the gold are very close together. Mm-hmm. If but I can, you don't want it so close to the silver that you end up ripping through the right, like I did on this one. <laughs> oh yeah, I I, I kind of wonder if you know you're going to have like eight discs if you should do mandala stamp stamp one extra one, knowing that sure, could happen, yeah, right? But I'm going to show you tricks with the punch. It's going to save everything. So if I had a smaller jump ring, these would sit overlapped, right? Mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. why you want to get it to the very edge of the silver, so you don't have to go way far in. Is that making sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. All right, so with your punch, it if you notice the pin that actually goes through the metal, it's angled. Do you guys see that? Let's see how good I can mm -hmm, get without mm -hmm. losing focus. Yeah, right. it does look very clear. It often comes with it oriented in this way, meaning the tip of the angle is as far into, like sort of pointing into the jaw, right? Mm -hmm. Now when I make notched washers where I just want a little notch out of the outside, I loosen this and I turn the tip to the outside because you can see where you're placing it best on where the tip is. Oh, Does that make sense? Yes, that's very crafty. I would never so, have that. So when I'm punching on here, actually I'm just going to pull it away for a second because I can't see. I want to line it up and then bring it back. So when I'm punching on here, I can see exactly where the outside edge of this circle or this um, hole is going to be because that's where the punch is touching on mm -hmm, that side. Mm -hmm. So if your punch has the, the tip of the punch, the angle of the punch somewhere else, um, unscrew it and turn it and then tighten it back up because that makes a huge difference. I've got a little piece of paper here. It's cardstock because sometimes the tool, especially if you have, if you have to squeeze really hard, mars up your piece. It's no bueno. Now, if they're doing the screw down hole punch, that doesn't have an angle, does it, on that? No. But so that you... one's harder because it has two flat spots. So it takes out a little bit of the dome. Oh, okay. You could punch it and then try to um, dome it and then try to repunch it. I don't oh, know. gosh, that sounds like but a lot But this of work. one, I'm working, I'm using the 1.8 punch because I want a decent size hole for my 16 gauge jump ring. But you can see how close to the edge I am there, right? Mm -hmm. So let me just punch it. Folks are saying that the angle does show up really well on camera. We can oh, really sweet. see it. Sweet. Yay, technology. Okay. And then you kind of rock it off. Good. So now on the now you can be official and like mark it with a pen, but I'm just not good at that stuff. You can eyeball it. Okay, I gotta take it back a little bit so I can see it again. Okay, so I just placed it, and that's too close to the edge. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's going to rip through. So I'm just going to hold it and scoot it up a little bit. Look at it from all angles. Mm -hmm. I try to work it into the mandala, so make sure that it's like in the middle of that stamping, mm -hmm. which, sorry to pull it away from the camera, I just need to be able to see it. Yes, this whole punch is a 1.8, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can use the thinner ones. It just depends on... Um, what jump ring you're using. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm just going to go for it. Yay! Oh, that looks good. Alright, so I'm happy with those two holes. So I'm going to line it up on the gold one now and mark where I want the holes. Because you can't fake it this time. Mm -hmm. So get this perfectly centered, hold it very still, and then mark here. Okay, that wasn't a good way to hold it. Let's do that again. <laughs> there we go. Here and here. Now, if you did use a smaller hole punch like the 1.5, and then you have to use a thinner gauge jump ring, it's like you said, it could kind of pull it apart, right? Like, so you kind of do mm -hmm. want to do a thicker jump ring. So yeah, but if you were making a pendant, like... Well, that's a good point. This yeah. would be a beautiful pendant, just with one hole. You know, you could use different mm -hmm. jump rings, smaller, thicker. 
This is just for this design. Which folks had said they really th thought these would be cute, just as pendants, too. Yeah, totally, or earrings. Mm -hmm. Okay, another thing to point out about the whole punch plier. I've made a black dot here. I don't want to place the tip of my punch in the middle of the dot because the tip of my punch is the inside of my hole. So it's going to shift it up. Do you see what I'm saying? So if I want to punch out that dot, the tip of the punch needs to be on the edge of my black dot. Oh, okay, yes. Does that make sense? Yes, more on the edge, yes. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. See? Like that? Mm -hmm. And then again, let me show you what not to do. So, you know, your first thought is just to put that punch right dead center, well, you can't see it now, of your dot. But you want the tip of the punch on the edge of your dot so that you're actually punching out the dot and not punching just above it. Oh yeah, and you know what, I did like that you showed us on the one dime where you had done an incorrect hole because the truth is that bottom one, if you do accidentally, mm -hmm. it, you still could hide it. Totally. And the key, yep, yeah, that lines up really well. The key mm -hmm. is um, the back one's being correct, so you can always mess with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I'm going to add a jump ring to this outside edge here. These are stainless steel jump rings. I grabbed them because they're super strong, but I'm not really happy with the color. Mm. They will look good. They're just a dark silver. If and when I go and oxidize this, they'll look great. Mm. But if I'm leaving it shiny, I might want to go over to a sterling 14 gauge like I've used on my mom's. She never takes it off. Never. Even sleeps with it? Sleeps, showers, everything. I love that. All right, so here yeah, she's we go. she's worth that 90 cents on her. I mean, <laughs> you said that she can't use it, but still, <laughs> in a moment where you oh. might need it. Open it like so. You guys know how to open jump rings. If not, head on over to our site. We've got lots of videos. I don't know what you could buy for 90 cents anymore. It's certainly not even a cup of coffee. Yeah, definitely not. Okay, so that went through pretty well. Oops, sorry, it was off screen. Now for this one, I'm going to first put on the silver one and then the gold one. You'll know right away if you oriented it wrong. Flip it over and close your jump ring. Again, I've got a camera in my face, so I can't see very mm -hmm. well. I prefer to hold it like this, but... Do you think it's significantly harder to close a stainless steel jump ring than like other metals? Um, I do only in that when I close jump rings, I rock it back and forth as I'm pushing mm -hmm. it together and I have a harder time pushing it together. So as you rock it back and forth, you got to really try to do this so that the tension closes it. Like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, not actually, no. So I've got another link. That's quite ready. I would, uh, this is one of those tough ones where like one more link might get, make it too big depending on the size of my I class. Think it would be, yeah. So it would end up like this, so it, but then. Plus you still have to have a ring to get the clasp into. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I could use a big clasp or, I mean, I guess I could do one more link smaller too. Like use smaller discs. Oh, that's true. That would be kind of cute. Or you could actually do a couple jump rings on the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like a little chain. Yeah. So because my mom was the inspiration for this, I left it bright. She likes everything bright, not oxidized. Although this one's oxidized. But, like, I make her a lot of mixed metal gold and silver stuff. She likes it bright. Okay, so to talk about annealing, if I were, if I were making this for myself, I would have liked it beefier. I love sterling. I think it's worth the investment. I would have used 20-gauge circles and 20-gauge on the back to get a nice, thick feel. Oh. So if I had 20 gauge, I would have annealed them so that they take a really deep impression when stamping it. <laughs> I'm going like this. <laughs> um, the trouble though with that, I mean, the good thing is it's easier to shape because it's softer, even though you've stamped on it, which will harden it a little bit. But because it's softer, you could, if you hit too hard, lose some of your impression. Oh, yes, absolutely. You're right. I see what you're saying. So it's tricky. The only other thing you might consider is maybe your stamping goes great, but you're having a hard time um, shaping it in the dome. Mm -hmm. 
So then you could anneal it and the shaping will be easier. But again, don't hit really hard because you don't want to ruin your stamped impressions, mm -hmm. which on some of these, I don't know if you saw in the close up, I kind of lost a little bit of my stamped impression. A getting, little, but I still think it looks great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in, you okay, guys. you guys. Thanks so much. Bye.